Following growing demand driven by expansion in infrastructure in Africa, a total of three cement manufacturing companies on the Nigerian Exchange Limited, the NGX, have announced 1.18 trillion naira in revenue, half-year revenue, translating to about 270 billion total profit growth in the half-year ended June 30th, 2022. According to our sister publication, This Day News, analysis of the company's H1 unaudited results for the period under review showed that revenue grew by 23% to 1.18 trillion naira from 959 billion in the half-year of of 2021. Joining us to discuss further, Olayinka Additional. He's a cement and infrastructure analyst with Stambic IBTC. Olayinka, good morning to you. Thank you so much for joining us. You were on the uh, Boa Cement call, an analyst call yesterday. So while we're talking cement, uh, what was your summary of that call? Hey, thank you, Rotos. Thank you for having me on this call. Um, just to give a summary of the Boa Cement call yesterday, I think um, the insight we got from management is that um, management is still bullish about demand in the country. Um, I think expectation for 2022 is that we could still see 10% here on year demand growth, um, which will be about 21 billion metric tons uh, cement sales for Nigeria. So management appears to be bullish, uh, but looking at the market, at the performance of the three major companies, um, there's some um, view that demand may be slowing also in the market. And just to mention another thing is that we are seeing some disruption when it comes to energy supply. As we know, gas supply in the country has somewhat been affected or impacted um, in recent times. So this has been affecting operations of these cement companies. Um, I think that would be the major highlights from the call yesterday. Thank you so much for that. Uh, so for, I guess for the cement industry, what has been the, the trend in price movement? Has it you know, been trending upwards? Has it been flat? Or well, have, you, have you seen it? Yeah, so looking at this from 2021, um, we saw strong demand in the economy. And on the back of this, cement producers were pushing more volume. So they were able to increase prices. Uh, but since the beginning of 2022, we've seen interest rates in the economy start to increase. And this is somewhat affecting demand. As I mentioned earlier, uh, demand is starting to slow a bit. Uh, so on the back of this, uh, dem dem demand in the economy has been slowing. And on the back of this, prices has remained flattish. So we We've not seen significant price increase uh, in the cement industry compared to what we saw in 2022. So generally, I would say flattish prices for 2022 as of now. And so I guess th that wouldn't, if prices have been flat, then if volumes grow for each of the players in the cement sector, then that, they wouldn't get much upside from that. Yeah. Um, I think if volume starts to slow, it could impact them. Specifically, we saw that play out in um, Dangote Cement. Uh, we saw volumes decline by about 7%. Uh, but the good thing is that the strong pricing has supported revenue growth. I think for the year-on-year -year basis, they still grew about 17% um, thereabouts. Um, so with strong pricing and um, demand slow, uh, they could still continue to be in a good position. Uh, the other two major players, Bois Cement and Lafarge, both recorded revenue growth also and also strong earnings on the back of this um, revenue growth we've seen in the markets. All right. And what about inflation? Can we, where does inflation fit into the conversation as far as impacting you know, price and, and volumes for the uh, cement players? Yeah, so as a businessman, obviously, margins are important to you. So when we see inflation pass through the operations of these cement producers, mainly in terms of their distribution costs and also cost of production, um, it impacts them and it could also lead to their push prices higher. Um, we've seen inflation pass through significantly when it comes to energy price and also when it comes to distribution price. So um, in the long run, that could also be a driver for them to consider price increases. Thanks for that. Um, I want to talk about housing and our housing deficits in Nigeria. The number that's been thrown around for years is 17 million, uh, 17 million unit housing deficit. I'm sure that number has grown. Um, how do we plug that gap? And that keeps coming up whenever we discuss these big revenues for the cement players. That You've got such big players in cement yet, you've got a housing deficit, or unless maybe there are other factors at play. Um, how, how do you see that, that, that uh, line of thought? Yeah, I think the housing deficit is quite significant. But when we look at Nigeria as a whole, current production from our major players and utilization which we have in the economy right now is not able to produce all that we need. When you look at Nigeria as a 
country. Yeah, we are consuming low, lower than other developed economies, even countries in Africa. Our consumption per, per capita is way low. So I think that if a structural gap is still there in the meantime, what we can use to plug that, probably more investments from government and maybe more partnership when it comes to the public and private side will be able to help. Uh, but in terms of production of cement at the, at the time we are in now, I think we have to see more capacity in the industry to plug in our demand. All right, and then I guess what's the outlook for the cement players? Will infrastructure needs in Nigeria continue to support growth uh, for them? Definitely. In the long run, it is expected that this infrastructure gap that is significant will continue to support um, cement demand. Uh, but if you have to look at things in the near term, as I mentioned earlier, um, cement demand is kind of slowing at the moment. So in the near term, we could see some volume pressure. But definitely in the long run, we are expected to see um, infrastructure gaps support them. So cement producers in Nigeria are largely in a very positive um, position right now. And I guess if I was to ask you any stocks that you like in the sector, it's the, the, three, the three main players. Yeah, or are there any other, any other stock picks there? Yeah, um, for us, our most preferred pick remains Danksem. Danksem is well positioned. Um, 60% market share um, operations are very good, so we like Danksem. Um, when we look at the other players, Boasimens, we think Boasimens is also a fast growing player, uh, but we have a sell recommendation on, on Boasim. And was cement, which is majorly a valuation play for us. And in terms of Lafarge, uh, we still like Lafarge so bits in terms of its non operating activities, uh, largely because of the reduction in interest payments and also the reduction in tax rates, which should be positive for earnings in the near term. But overall, Dank Sem remains our preferred pick for the cement sector. All right. And of course, uh, Dank Sem is short for Dangote Cement, right? Just for Dangote our viewers. <laughs> um, real quick, uh, oil, OPEC Plus. Increased output by 100,000 barrels per day for September. Pretty small. Um, how does Nigeria fit into that mix as far as Nigeria's OPEC quota is uh, concerned? Yeah, the expectation from OPEC, 100,000 barrels per day increase. Um, Some is positive when you look at the global space because production has been way lower than um, demand. So that's why we've seen elevated prices. And when you look at things in terms of Nigeria, I think for us, we have a specific problem as a country because our current production is way lower than the quota OPEC has given us. I think that quota should currently be around 1.83 million barrels per day. And our production is somewhere around 1.2 million barrels per day. So on the side of OPEC, increasing their production quota, I don't see that really being positive for us because we've not really met our current production quota. So I would say it's more of um, a specific play for Nigeria or an individual play for Nigeria to improve things in the local space when it comes to infrastructure, when it comes to security, um, for us to see production in terms of oil starts to increase locally. Um, I mean, we read that quote from uh, former Emir of Kano uh, and also the former Central Bank Governor Lamido Sanu. So even the present Central Bank Governor uh, Gordon Emefele, both uh, talking about oil theft and the fact that we're not profiting from a higher oil prices. What 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 can be done to overcome this, uh, Inka? What do you think needs to be done? I think it's majorly increasing production. Um, in terms of the oil theft that we are seeing, it's majorly to improve security. Um, security in the oil producing region. And once the security improves on that front, we can start to increase uh, production locally. Uh, we've already seen headlines coming out of Niger uh, major media talking about um, producers being impacted by this oil theft. So it's for us to increase security in our um, South-South region to, to improve our production. Uh, Olayinka, additional uh, cement infrastructure analyst, Stambik IBTC, thanks for your time. We appreciate you talking to us.